Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, Admin Evangelist, and this is How I Solve This. In today's episode, Admin Trailblazer Sky Taylor shows us how she flexes her admin superpowers using formulas and flow to bypass validation rules. Today, I'm with Sky Taylor, Senior Consultant at Exponent Partners. Really excited to have you on How I Solve This, Sky. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So um, I'm always interested in learning about everyone's Salesforce journey because everyone's journey path is unique to themselves. So Sky, why don't you share a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you and then about your Salesforce journey? Oh, I'd be happy to. Uh, So I found Salesforce in 2015. Uh, At the time, I was a military spouse, and I was looking for a career that could be remote, that I could continue to grow and develop, even through frequent moves. Um, When I started working in Salesforce in 2015, I've been working with Salesforce and nonprofits the whole time. I am passionate about the role that nonprofits play in our communities, and I think they deserve access to the best technology to help meet their mission. Hmm. As you mentioned, I'm currently a senior consultant at Exponent Partners, and in the about seven years that I've been in the space, I've earned nine certifications. Uh, The most recent, I'm the most proud of, I finally made it to Application Architect. Yay! (laughs) Awesome. Share with us how you're involved in the Salesforce Ohana. Oh, oh my gosh. That was one of the things, uh, finding Salesforce, that just really blew me away. Um, I'm a member of the Salesforce military community, Mm -hmm. and I also volunteer with Marivis, uh, both of which work with veterans and military spouses, helping them transition to careers in the Salesforce space. Uh, I previously was a co-leader for the San Antonio nonprofit community group, and I'm active now in the Nashville community groups. Uh, I also love things like this. I love speaking and presenting at Salesforce events, Um, just sharing ideas, being able to learn from other people, and also just being able to support and encourage each other. Yeah, you most recently spoke at uh, Dreamforce 21. Um, So you were there on site. So how was that experience? It was amazing. Um, any Dreamforce, in my opinion, is us is going to be awesome. Uh, but being there for 2021, you know, the first in-person Dreamforce after the pandemic or during the pandemic, um, it was a very different experience. It was uh, much smaller, mm. uh, scaled back, um, but they had amazing safety precautions, so people could feel really comfortable mm. getting together and you know being able to share spaces. And I just thought that the Salesforce community did a fantastic job of still putting on amazing learning events, uh, sharing information, supporting and uplifting each other. Um, And also, because I just can't emphasize it enough, being safe, doing all of that. Right. Okay. So we're here to hear your business problem and how you solve the solution. So share with us the business problem that you are trying to solve. Yeah, I'm going to walk you through it. One of our clients has a child care program that they call Campfire. And the campers who participate in the program are able to earn camper credits for different activities that they participate in. And they can trade those credits in for snacks or swag at the camp store. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of each session, the members of the data team create a new camper credit record that keeps track of the credits that are earned, uh, credits that are traded in and their balance. And only the data team should be able to edit these camper credit records once they're set to active. So we created a validation rule that allows only uh, permission set, which is data team, users who have that custom permission, to be able to edit if the status is active. Now the camp counselors, they're responsible for actually entering in information about the activities that the campers do to earn those credits. So as a camp counselor, I would be able to go in and say that Astro helped out with cleaning up and we're gonna give Astro five credits and we're gonna connect this to the current active camper credit through a lookup. Now we also have a simple flow 
that takes the information from that activity record and is going to update and keep updated that camper credit record. So as additional activities are added, that credit is going to increase on the credits earned. However, because we have this validation rule in place, as a camp counselor, when I try to save this record and the flow tries to update the camper credit, I'm getting this error message because the validation rule is preventing me from being able to update the activity, which then the flow is updating the credit. Oh, I hate that when, when you're trying to do stuff with automation and then those validation rules come up and you're, you hit that wall. Yeah, they so, just trip you up. So I'm pretty sure a lot of admins have faced that same problem. So tell us how you solved it. I was so excited to solve this with a toggle. And this is a super simple, uh, but really powerful idea. So what we've done is back on the camper credit record, I created a simple custom field that is called toggle. And the toggle is simply a checkbox field. It's not a formula field, just a plain old checkbox called toggle. On that validation rule, I'm going to hop back to it here. We're going to add a simple additional criteria to that validation rule that says that it will not fire if the toggle is changed. So I'm just going to add in here that now the validation rule will fire if toggle is not changed. So we're going to save that. And then very, very simply, again, referring back to the toggle, we're going to hop back into our flow. Now, in the flow, I have already created a formula that's referencing that toggle. The formula is also super simple. It's a simple if criteria where if the toggle value is already true, you're going to set it to false, else you're going to set it to true. And the reason this is so magical is it doesn't matter what the current value of toggle is. Whatever the current value is, it's going to set it to the opposite value. Mm -hmm. And so then it's going to escape that validation rule. Oh. So we're going to have this formula. And in both of the update criteria, we're going to include that whether it's updating the uh, existing credit or creating a new activity and updating the credit, we're going to set the value of the toggle field using that formula. And once we do that, we already have this activated. We have our new validation rule in place. And now as a camp counselor, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to give Astro credit for helping to clean up. And so he's still going to get five points, connect it to the camper credit in question. And Astro is currently in excellent standing. Now, when we go ahead and click save, no error on the validation rule, and it would have updated the camper credit to show that Astro's status is excellent and they have five credits that they can use at the camp store. Wow, that was a fairly simple solution to the problem. That's great. Now, I do want to call out that with the enhancements in flow and the fact that you can run a flow in system mode, which ignores user permissions, mm -hmm. if the only thing you're using this flow for is to update that camper credit record when the activities are edited or created, you could build the flow to run in system mode. But a lot of our admins are following the one flow per object rule. And you might have other business processes that do need to respect the user permission of the running user. And so using something like toggle allows you to have some paths of the flow uh, escape those validation rules with toggle, while other paths of the flow could respect those validation rules or respect the user permissions. So just curious, Sky, how long did it take you to figure out this little solution to that problem? You know, the funny thing, I'm glad that you asked that, but I'm also not glad you asked that because I've been using Toggle in different ways for a couple of years. And I honestly don't remember the first time it came across my vision, um, but I'm constantly finding new reasons to use it. And so the, the hardest part 
whenever I first started with the flow process was just getting that formula right. Cause I kept trying to, the first time I did it, I tried to set the value to a certain value and then change it again at the end of the flow so that for instance, toggle would always be set to false Mm -hmm. um, by the time the flow ended. Mm -hmm. Um, So getting that formula in the flow was kind of a game changer for me because you didn't have to worry about constantly resetting the value of toggle for it to work. Well, I loved how you use the formula and then the flow to solve this business problem and uh, to bypass validation rules. I know a lot of admins hit that. Um, So Thank you so much, Sky, for being a guest on How I Solve This. And um, I'm looking forward to having you back. Well, thank you for having me. And I will be happy to come back anytime. You just saw Sky demo a cool Formula Flow combo solution she built to creatively bypass validation roles. Way to put those declarative tools to use. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you never miss another episode of How I Solve This. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome Admin!